Acorns have sustained my people for centuries. Sounds of Chile's Sana Comal remind me of the songs of my ancestors. Seeds of Peace. From an Afghan honeydew melon with scars running so deep on the outside, it's hard to imagine how sweet the inside can be. Corn has sustained the Lakota people for many years. If I were to be speaking to somebody who is of my ancestral lineage seven generations from now, I would ask him, well, what is your name? And who do you come from? What do you like to eat? Through this process, I've learned about how Native folk processed acorns. I feel like if I could ask my ancestors what, <laughs> one question, it would be, what is most important to you? Is it food? Is it family? So you see the, the musical part of it, you know? If you had like 10 people doing this all at the same time, you would have your, what I call my acorn orchestra. <laughs> You notice when I'm sifting it, you can smell it in the air too. You know, as you're just bouncing it along, it just kind of carries in the wind. I mean, look at how much we made just with us novices, you know? <laughs> we just did it today. You can imagine how much a whole group of Native people who knew what they were doing would make. Okay, so see, look at all the acorns. Uh -huh. Again, feel it and then pass it on. Just... I would ask what, what's their favorite food out of all the foods that they have to offer, including tuli and berries and different roots and trees. Now I'm realizing that we have to conserve these native foods and realize that they were also stripped from us and definitely a lot of it was taken away. It started to get me thinking about trying to not recreate the ways but just keep the ways of the native people alive. Ese es el lunch alimento de ellos, del nistamal. El lunch de masa. Ajá, de pozole. Ajá. Entonces los desleían ellos, llevaban su agua acá. Masa. Sí, era el lunch. No hay Coca-Cola, no hay sándwiches, no hay. They'd always say, it's all they had, you know? It's all they had. Native people ate acorns, because that's all they had. You know, like it was nothing. And I'm, and I'm like, no, no, that's not it. It was a gift. Acorn was a gift from us, from the creator. He, he gave us that acorn, that first oak tree, what my grandmother said. You had the big pieces and the little pieces that you separated. That's what sifting does. You separate those. And so when you're doing that, and you're using this and you're separating, unfortunately, well, I guess a long time ago when the miners were seeing Native people do that, all they thought, oh, what a wonderful way to, 
separate gold nuggets from small pieces of gold. So it was really horrible when the 49ers would come around and kill all our people off just to take these baskets. 75% of our crop diversity is already gone because of agribusiness, basically, genetic modification, commodity foods that completely shifted the diet from basically wild game and fresh vegetables and what they gathered to canned meats, powdered eggs, powdered sugar, powdered milk. And a lot of Native people, um, like a lot of communities of color, are lactose intolerant, so um, created pretty horrific health impacts. Our Native food, acorns, hunting and gathering, it's all been lost for the most part. There are people who keep the tradition alive and things like that, but for the most part, when people think food, they don't think of gardening, they think of grocery store. My family, we traditionally would go to the neighborhood liquor store because it was the closest to, you know, our house and also because it was inexpensive. A lot of folks who tend to consume these things that are not good for them, it's not because they want to, you know. I mean, granted, like we were saying, like there's a sense of addiction, no doubt. Um, and not all of us are willing to, uh, to admit that it's an addiction. But um, a lot of times it's because of like, you're limited, right? You're limited in like the amounts of money you have on a daily basis. So like, what can you buy in that day? We know that we're being poisoned by the foods that are available to us in the grocery stores. Um, it's not what we traditionally ate as indigenous folks, both of this continent and um, the African continent. So it's important that we reclaim um, righteous food that really uh, heals us. Um, and that we shift the narrative. Oftentimes, folks assume that people of color don't know how to farm, that we don't know what organic food is, right? When we've been doing that for uh, thousands and thousands of years, so we're trying to reclaim that narrative that this is in our bones, it's who we are, um, and it's important that we um, take advantage of the land that, um, you know, is here to provide for us. Y'all wanna see the farm? As you can see, there's tons of industrialization around us. Lots of trucks, we have old gasoline and oil storage tanks. There's creosote facilities. There's an area where they, when they do deforestation and logging, they bring the logs in and they cut them and treat them over here and stop them along the waterway. You're also in one of the largest agricultural counties uh, in the world right now. And we are definitely feeling the effects of the drought. I felt it was very important to bring the group here today um, to show you where some of your water comes from and then to connect you to the whole food system um, along this water path. The Mokolumni River, there's a lot of native plants, the salmon and steelhead, the old native foodway. There's really, I think, a very potent food revolution happening on multiple levels, in multiple streams. I'm not going to accept that I don't have the option of eating healthy food. I'm not going to accept that I can't have access to an organic farm. And these foodways are not just about what you put in your mouth, right? It's really a whole way of life. Learning how to grow our own food gives us the power to be able to start a new method of living and not only nourish myself but also educate others. I think food is part of a cultural legacy. I think it's something that connects you to your personal history, to your ancestors. It's something that will connect you to your descendants, to yourself. And it's a way of showing culture and history, the type of food you make, the type of food you eat, who you eat it with, where you eat it. These are all things that show us who we are as people. We're so used to going places to get food, but we can do it ourselves, right? Like I could make those foods. All I needed to do was ask for the recipes for my family. 
Native Americans are still here and <laughs> they're thriving yeah, and that we are thriving.